this documentary is very impactful. It is very engaging as well. Um, during the making of this, uh, what was the journey like? How, how did you guys feel making this? Because it seemed like not only you, were you guys having fun, but you, you guys were revolutionizing something that had a, a culture that, you know, had been doing this for many years. Uh, I would say from my experience, experience, it was like flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> like you put all these big things in motion and it's like a giant boulder going down the, the hillside and it just kind of has this momentum of its own and you just have to have faith that it will all come out at the end. Um, but, you know, being in the hands of Don and Carrie was very comforting because I have the utmost trust in them as humans and as artists and filmmakers. And um, I think that they really were able to take what was a life changing experience for me personally and elevate it and craft it so that it could resonate beyond sort of the moment I lived it. So that was that was just such a precious, amazing thing to witness. Uh, and Don and Carrie, you know, how, how was it for you guys seeing this happen in real time? Well, it's interesting because, you know, I've known Jen for over 20 years and yet the this this journey is one we've never been on together. But, you know, watching her this close and creating something so beautiful. So, you know, it's as a filmmaker, it's it, there's there's I, is it lightning in a bottle? The, the thing that you can never you can't make happen, but just kind of <laughs> there it is. And, yeah. and I feel like that this entire process has been like that. Um, you know, from the beginning when I said, hey, you know, hey, Jen, I think it's actually a film when she wanted me to to shoot the concert um, just to document it. And I was like, this is a film. And, you know, from that day forward, uh, we were talking about this earlier that uh, people say yes all along the way. And as somebody who's a little bit woo woo, I've never been in a film where every time you ask somebody, hey, what do you think about this? Could you help us with this? Would you like to be involved here? The answer was always yes. And it was an enthusiastic yes. And you just don't get that. And so you you feel like you're almost part of something that, you know, again, you have you don't have control over and you just along for the ride and so grateful to be on this ride. Carrie, uh, any anything you know, input? I like to think of uh, a document, do, approaching a documentary film is like buying a really expensive one-way ticket to an unknown destination. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it, we kind of did know that that concert was out there. We knew that that was the goal. We knew that was our destination. And yet we weren't really ever quite sure if we were gonna be able to get there. There were a lot of obstacles to overcome along the way. And um, as you can see in the film, you know, things happen like a pandemic. And um, so, you know, some things you just can't foresee. And so I think um, whenever uh, possible, it's interesting to have uh, challenges to overcome. And we thought we had enough built in already with women being suppressed from Tycho stages for thousands of years. But lo and behold, there were more obstacles to come. <laughs> you know, Definitely. so we overcame them. Yeah. So what was the, the what did you guys want to make it from the beginning of this documentary to be? And how did it evolve along the way? Uh, well, for me, I just went in eyes open. Um, Dawn has sort of explained to me what her her and Carrie's approach was of cinema verite and letting the cameras roll and letting the characters and the story emerge um, and not having a sort of a predestined sort of outcome. Um, and and so it seemed like a, a, a really creative and exciting way to, to take this journey with them. Um, and for me, I was just so excited. I'm just so excited to get Asian faces, Asian faces on screen, especially women, and to, to show them not in trauma and not suffering, but to show them celebrating and claiming their power and, you know, kind of being their best selves. I just, I'm so excited for that opportunity to represent and to show those images and to celebrate these women that I admire so much. Um, it's such a gift. It's such a gift to me. And I feel like in some way we're, we're starting our, our own little revolution. Definitely. Uh, so, yeah, like you, uh, Carrie mentioned uh, throughout the process, the pandemic happened. It's something nobody would have ever predicted. 
how was that an obstacle and you guys overcame it you know how did you guys go about overcoming that that huge obstacle it was such an unknown then you know this was february of 2020 and as each day would emerge there would be news on a national uh front kind of and we'd see it heading our way and then i think maybe there was one fatality in the time of our filming and you know but there was really the no indication there was no indication of what was coming really there was just this kind of a oh this thing is happening and you know so w we were in the dark uh and you know really only have a chance to see it with hindsight really clearly how close we were to not having any film at all <laughs> because if that concert had been scheduled to be you know 10 days later, we probably wouldn't have had it. Definitely. And, and then, you know, yeah, so we we dodged something significant there, you know, mm -hmm. being one of the final concerts uh, in the region, in the country probably, <laughs> before COVID really kicked in and everybody went into lockdown. But, you know, the film was also, post-production was done completely remotely. You know, we did our color correction in, I was in Duluth, Minnesota. Carrie, I think you were in Key West, Mm -hmm. Florida and our colorist was in Minneapolis and we were doing a zoom color correction you know normally you are in the room for that mm -hmm. and you know the edit was shipping drives back and forth and project files and mm -hmm. you know so it, it was a it was a very interesting experience but um, we were lucky in the sense that production itself was completed <laughs> before the pandemic really kicked in um and then it was just an issue of how do you how do you edit a film while i have a fly in my face how do you edit a film uh you know during a pandemic i think one of the things that was a surprise is um, when we were um, given the list of taiko players from Japan, for instance, we really had to choose just a couple to follow in Japan and, and a, just a couple of women to lift up and to give their backstories and to give people a real sense of where they came from. And I don't think that anybody could have really foreseen how perfect the two women represented what's happening in Taiko today with um, Chieko being from Kado, the school of Kado and Sado Island and being very traditional and wanting for uh, 40 years to get on stage, but really the only way she could get on stage was being a dancer and then how she revolutionized and found a place for herself. And then Kaoli, who has been practicing for 20 years, but for whom, the taiko world doesn't necessarily uh, believe that she's a taiko player because she is so exuberant and her style is so um, unique that she's not accepted. Uh, and so I, I that was a revelation to me. I wasn't expecting that. Perhaps Jen had some understanding of that. When yeah, she, well, it's, you you know, know, it's, it's that difference between working for change from within the system and then just working completely outside the system. And they both had their different paths to create the art that they did. So they were just so beautiful uh, mm -hmm. in that the representation spanned what's happening for women in Japan. Definitely, uh, Jennifer, all these women were so talented, so strong, so empowered. Uh, what made you guys trust Carrie and Don with this story? Well, partly because I've known Don for so long and admired her work, you know, so this was just a wonderful opportunity to, to collaborate in a different way. Um, and then I met Carrie through this process. And, you know, honestly, like they were in the trenches, especially Carrie with us and became part of the company, you know, in terms of um, where we were schlepping drums, they were schlepping cameras. And, you know, I, I always wondered, like, because when we were eating or resting, they were filming us eating or resting, which made me wonder when did they, did they ever eat or rest <laughs> during this shoot? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it just became an extended uh, creative family, I would say, in, in that way. And that's, I mean, honestly, that's how, especially, you know, the, the folks who don't, didn't know them at all, um, 
came to relax and be themselves and share that that's very kind of special space with them that intimacy that Carrie was talking about um, is really due to the trust that you know these women inspire and their approach um, to filmmaking and and again that idea of having their representation behind the camera that you have in front of camera so people really feel that you get it you get they're on your side they're in your corner they get you um, it, it made a big difference and that was Dawn's vision from the beginning mm -hmm. as one of the producers. She really said she wanted the people behind the camera to represent the people and to represent the demographic of the people in front of the camera. Right. So we just had an amazing crew. Yeah, like 99% of the uh, of the filmmakers and the crew were either Asian, female or non-binary or queer. And that was that was the the picture in front of the camera and behind the camera. So I think it it really made a difference for this film. Awesome. Well, congratulations to you all. This is an incredible watch. It's so empowering. It's so moving. It's a, just a beautiful documentary altogether. So oh, thank, thank you very you. much for your time. Thank Thanks you so much.